Hi, um, I'm a big sucker for um, British sci-fi horror movies of the 50s and 60s, uh, the old Hammer and Amicus pictures. So I was very pleased to get round to seeing Night of the Big Heat, uh, released in the US as Island of the Burning Damned or Island of the Burning Doom. Um, it's very much of a piece with many of the British sci-fi horror movies of the late 60s, in which uh, a small Scottish island, well, it's not Scottish actually, because there's no one in the island, no one on the island has a Scottish accent, an island basically, um, is suffering a, an unseasonable bout of extremely hot weather during November. And a mysterious guest at the island's only guest house is conducting some form of bizarre experiments. And as the evening continues and a new guest arrives at the hotel, a uh, secretary to the um, wife, wrong, secretary to the husband of the owner of the hotel, because he's also a novelist. This is absurdly complicated. Um, and uh, people start to go missing and dead bodies turn up and weird things happen. And it turns out that the island is actually under attack from some kind of alien that requires immense heat to survive. Um, it's not that good. <laughs> there are a lot of, of these films around at the time. The gold standard is, of course, the Quatermass films. And this was released the same year as Quatermass and the Pit, which is one of the best British science fiction horrors ever made. Um, Night of the Big Heat, even though it has a reasonable pedigree, it was uh, not written as a novel that had been previously adapted for television and stars no less than Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing in major roles, supplemented by uh, Patrick Allen, Kenneth Cope in a small role. It's it's really working more on atmosphere and mood. Uh, the actual plot is fairly thin. The film is barely 90 minutes. And a big mistake, I think, is <laughs> putting Patrick Allen, who is an actor who has a great announcer's voice and is good-looking in a very traditional way, but it's not a particularly engaging screen presence. Um, Peter Cushing has really little more than an extended cameo as the island's doctor, and Christopher Lee is rather oddly killed off before the film's climax, even though he was a huge star and his top build. And the final reveal of the aliens is being essentially large jelly moulds is extremely disappointing, not to mention the film's final resolution, which is that the aliens are killed when it starts raining. Which is particularly odd because there are earlier scenes from the location where it is very obviously raining. Um, but uh, the lighting fails to disguise the fact. It's well acted. You know, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing would always play everything as though it's of the highest quality, regardless of how dreary the scripts are. And the photography uh, is quite reasonable. Terence Fish, who is a veteran of this kind of material, is a director, so he's playing it well. It doesn't help also that the version that I watched, at the very least, appears to have been edited. Um, rather clumsily removing a scene of um, apparent sexual assault. Um, if that scene did appear in the original film, then it's been clumsily removed. If it didn't, then it's very poorly handled and didn't need to be there in the first place. Um, so it's definitely lower tier, but um, it's at the very least has a degree of competence in its construction.